Hello and welcome to the Science Fiction Book Review Podcast. My name is Luke Burridge and this is the show where I review every single book that I read as I read it. There's no set schedule, it's just whenever I finish the book, I do the review. Joining me this time out is Juliana. Say hello, Juliana. Hello, everyone. And uh, yeah, so what book are we reading? Um, Yeah, you go for it. We're talking about Elysium Fire by Alistair Reynolds. Yeah, it's the latest um, book, which he's gone back to. It just came out this month. We got some um, advanced review copies via uh, NetGalley or whatever it was. Got some e-books. You read the PDF version. I read a very, 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 very badly formatted early review copy, uh, like a like just an e-book version of it and stuff like that. I, I'm so. This is, a, I guess, one of the reasons why when people say, "Hey, do you want a book to review?" and they're like, "I'll send you an e-book," I was like, "No, I kind of want the one that's been the final version, like the one that you read. Yeah. Was it a PDF?" Yeah, version? it was good. Yeah. But I, I only have an iPad mini and sometimes the PDF versions are a bit annoying because you kind of got to zoom on in each page, you know, it's like... Yeah, I mean, not... the, the, the PDF uh, pages on my iPad was, were a bit cropped in. Yes. So I had to decide, do I want uh, bars on each side yeah. or do I want it full screen but then always have to tap twice on it? And yeah, stuff, to, so. to get in and stuff. So um, yeah, that's the difference. Through. That's the difference yeah, between to... you having an iPad Pro, which has got like a 15 inch screen um, and me having an iPad mini, which has got a six inch screen actually i don't know how big those ipad <laughs> minis are uh but yeah this time no audiobook either we just went straight for the ebook again yeah. so uh the reason why uh we got some advanced copies of this is because it just came out and uh, they're like yeah, hey no, do you want it and i'm 23rd like 23rd of january yeah I'm, 2018 yeah so actually. just uh, two weeks ago and normally i am very much on the side of no don't send me don't send me emails with books i um, i want to review i always get these emails which say hey i'm a big fan of your podcast uh, can i can i send you my ebook or can i send you a copy of my books to review um, or on twitter hey i'm a big fan of your podcast what's your email address and i know that if people actually listen to these podcasts i say my email address at the end of every podcast i often say don't send me ebooks to read or um, audio books to read or you know real books to read god forbid people actually send me real books um, anyway this one i was like yes because it's a um, an author, one of my favourite authors, Alistair Reynolds. Also, I guess one of your favourite science fiction authors totally. as well. Yeah, um, and we uh, we actually read the, the the previous book to that together, or we listened to that. Right? Yes, I've actually read it twice. Or we've actually reviewed it twice um, because uh, let me have a look now. Um, Episode? I'm trying to type in episode. Um, episode <laughs> is. So I read this, um, the prefect, when it came out. What the prefect, the, the first book in uh, in this series. Uh, well, I guess it's a weird one. Um, the first book in this series, uh, I read it uh, quite early on in the um, in the Revelation space. Look here, episode oh, wow. nineteen. So yeah, it's been ten years. Oh, this is what I was going to mention. This is now the tenth year, the tenth anniversary of the Science Fiction Book Review podcast. Woo! This episode is it because the first episode that I actually uh, released. I, re- I actually recorded a few of them and saved them up, and then published them all on January thirty first. And now it's February the fourth. Wow. Look at that introduction to the SFBRP. Um, look, we can go along there. Joan D. Vinge, Outcast of Heaven's Belt. Also, I think yeah, January the thirty first. I actually, po- even though I'd been recording them throughout January, like the first five or six episodes, I recorded in January to make sure it was good. And then I started posting them all, you know, just so people. If someone found the podcast, there'd already be like four or five episodes there. And it's the thirty first of January two thousand and eight. So happy tenth birthday, Science Fiction Book Review Podcast. Well done. So yeah, the prefect goes back to where is it here? Uh, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so the sixth, the sixth. Uh, oh no, that's June, isn't it? Uh, Two thousand eight, June twenty first is when I published uh, my review of um, the prefect. So this goes. This the start of this story was ten years ago. However, we also reviewed it. Um, uh, not too, not too long ago. Why I say that? No, it's probably still like, five years ago. <laughs> really, five years ago. Yeah. Well, oh, I'm yeah, getting it. Tina, Tina's calling. Oh uh, yeah, I'll um, I'll. Um, so what we uh, were saying was that, yeah, Revelation yeah. Space... 205 yeah, was, was another episode. Yeah, 205 about the prefect. Still 2013, so still oh. quite a long time ago. Yeah. So anyway, this next book comes out. Um, uh, Alistair Reynolds says, hey, I've had some fun with some other books and some other series and stuff. Let's get back to the Revelation Space series. And uh, and he goes back to the prefect because that was his like one of his last books in the series. It's like a prequel to the other, or like it's set... 200 years before the other um, Revelation Space books in that series. 
And uh, the reason you can go back to it is because it's set so far ahead, so far ahead um, of those other books. And there's so much story still to go before the melding plague hits Chasm City, before it hits Yellowstone and before it hits the Glitter Band, which is this um, 10,000 habitats in a ring around uh, this, the planet of Yellowstone. And because there's 10,000 habitats and there's lots of things that can go wrong in those 10,000 habitats, and there's lots of interesting stories that you can tell about how it's set up so he goes back and he and he fills in some of those gaps i guess yeah um, also um it's kind of like a different approach because it's like it feels a bit more like a a crime story novel you know yeah. you have a, an, an investigator and you have these like whole police kind of yeah it's whatever. totally police procedural yeah. kind of stuff and um and uh, yeah we, we listened to the audiobook the first time around and this time we read the ebook I noticed a heavy dis- dif- dif- difference in that. I had to go back to the ebook to remember how, um, what's the name, uh, John Lee yeah. pronounces the You mean name- you had to go back to the audiobook? Yes. Okay. So I, T- Italia because, Eng. Yeah. To, to get all this nice, uh, like, I just loved the way he, he read it. And so I had to get some of that back in my head, to, yeah. you know, to remind me of, like, get some... Some of that in my head again yeah. by reading the ebook. For me, it's very clear that when I listen to, when I read this as an ebook, I have John Lee's audiobook narration oh, yeah, yeah, in yeah. my head. Totally, me too. And I don't think it's just because of this book, because there's, I mean, it is because of the Revelation Space books and the Prefect, um, but also he, there was other other narrators for his other books, the Blue Remembered Earth series, the Poseidon's Children series, yeah. and some other books that I've read um, have had other narrators because, you know, they're mostly, you know, uh, characters from um, Tanzania or, you know, and, oh, yeah, and so black characters and women characters. So it's accents. not here. Yeah, but here you've just got these, you know, the, the, a good, I mean, I say is a good mix of accents. You know, there's always these things where you go, oh, this is this is definitely some French and Russian characters within this within these uh within these uh, stories as well yeah um like Dreyfus I guess is is a is is it kind of a French name I don't even know but there's um right Jane Aumonier yes and the, like I say there's there's different uh different nationalities you think that have come to Mellow, Yellow, Mellowstone yeah. Yellowstone and the uh, the glitter band but what makes this so good is that we're just immediately back into it sort of like oh two years ago all the shit that went down in the prefect went down. Here's the three or four or five main characters that you remember from that story. And what's the fallout from that? And what's the next crisis that yeah. they're going to... It, there's kind of like no explanation, really. Like, uh, to me, it felt like I was immediately... What? I, I, if I wouldn't have had uh, the story of the first prefect book... Yes. Um, I don't know. But I had it. And so it was kind of like, it just filled... It just yeah. continued. Yeah, if you haven't read the prefect, you really need to read the prefect think, yes. to go into this with any idea of like who is Jane? Why does why is she talking about sleeping? You know yeah. what what's what's going on with the the clockmaker? What's going on with you know uh, you know why do people say oh I've had this run in with the technology in the past or these robots oh I don't yeah. like robots you know and all these things that they're talking about at the start you really need to have. You know, you really need to have read the prefect to go into this, which is one of those tricky things when you come to review a book like this as well. How do you how do you talk about a book like this before? Um, uh, let's go. Uh, how do you talk about a book like this without spoiling what went on in the uh, you know in the previous book? Except to say, of course, some of these characters survive, and some of the characters in the first story don't survive, and some of them do survive. And in this one, sure. some of the characters don't survive, but some of them do survive. But it definitely feels like, oh, this is going to be this can be as long run series as Alistair Reynolds wants because he's got a lot of time to build up. If he's building up to what the me- like, what is the melding plague, um, yeah. or where does it come from, or when is it going to hit? Because it's always a bit like nebulous, like how far ahead of this um, of the melding. The melding plague is a thing that kind of wipes out all of society, but leaves behind. A, like a hardcore dystopian wreckage and that um, is, that's of the Revelation space universe. That is basically talked in, in the book Chasm City, right? Um, it's mostly, it, it's explained there more than in any other book. Okay, well it's, I haven't read that. I, I uh, think should you should because uh, it really puts yeah. a different spin onto reading this sort of like, oh, we go down to Chasm City. Like if you've yeah. read all of those, those, all of those other books, that those kind of scenes have a different poignancy. And if you haven't read those other books, when you get to them, you'll know, like if you read these books internal chrono, chrono, in a, the internal 
chronological order, you realize the references that they're making in the, certainly in the prefect, a little bit less in this book of like, oh, something's going to happen in the in the future. Oh, what's this thing, you know, going yeah. on? And if you've read the three Revelation space novels, especially, I know it's weird to say this, especially the third novel, which you've not read yet, Absolution Gap, which is a big, chunky novel. But the ending of that is so profound that it's really difficult to read and review these other books in this series without always, like, for me not having the end in mind and that's always the thing with these prequels like if you're reading something with an ending point in mind or what's going to happen like we know that the glitter band is going to fall and become the rust belt we know that chasm city is going to like be destroyed and you know the melding plague is going to come and wipe out most technology and it's just like i say this was meant to be the utopia uh, utopian vision of a yellowstone and the glitter band before it falls and you know becomes the rust belt and with the melding plague so the, the first book was very much oh utopia yes everything's great it's direct democracy and everything's perfect and as that book went on you're like okay maybe not that perfect and and certainly this book is sort of like oh yes this utopia turns out never a utopia and we're getting more and more into the disgusting underbelly of of a lot of this stuff what I really like about this kind of stuff is how well he looks into um, researching in uh, democracy like you have a democracy, you have the, the total democracy, and how can that be destroyed Yeah, from the inside? Yes, and also and that, like the, I, what I really checks and that. balances are yeah, needed yeah. there as well. And other yeah. people say there has to be more checks and balances. And of course, the people doing the checks and the balances saying, yeah, there should be a little bit more checks and balances, but other people saying, not enough check, you know, all, yeah, those, yeah. Different, all those different things. So yeah, it's, it's really an interesting idea that the, the glitter band um, these thousand, uh, thousand, ten thousand different habitats. The only thing that's sacred is that people are allowed to move between them if they want to, and that everybody has to vote on the things that happen within their, uh, within their place, yeah. and also vote on like the wide thing so all the time people are voting everyone's yeah. got these chips in their head and all the time everyone is voting on everything and that's what keeps it and of course the, what the prefects is what's it called the um panoply yeah panoply is their main job their only law enforcement stuff that they have to do is to make sure that this voting process keeps working so at the start of this book there's like there's a there's a rabble rouser in the start of this one and his name is devlin was it devlin garvin yeah Ga- garvin Gar- Gar- garvin devlin someone um anyway and he's so bad with names yeah so he's all like oh we've got to you know forget the panoply let's get out of this and become our own systems and secede from the union and things what i really like about this direct like complete democracy democracy idea is that people have the feeling that they are very much involved you know like uh, what always happens in democracy they think oh yeah we we are the people and you decide over our heads and in a democracy like that yeah it that kind of Feels like it can't happen. Yeah. Uh, but there's this very funny thing. He says he gets into the deep system cruiser, you know, one of these um, battleships that they have, like their most, their yeah. biggest battleship. And the battle cruiser is called Democratic Circus. And I quite like the idea that you have a, uh, you have a spaceship called the Democratic Circus and it's run by Panoply. You know, there's lots of different things in there that like, it's kind of like a, this whole book is kind of a joke about, oh, who's actually in charge? And it's sort of like, oh, the yeah. oligarchs can't be in charge. And this rabble rouser, you're like, oh, you know, he's like this young, um, enthusiastic well not even young he's like he's meant to be like about 60 years old or something but you know for the for the time that's quite young you know there's some people who are hundreds and hundreds of years old yeah it seems um but yeah he's this young young um a political uh, upstart but you know he's very rich and you're like oh is, is he meant to be donald trump but he's not meant to be donald trump <laughs> but he is one of these people who is he they're, they're straight away going oh you're meant to be you're calling yourself a man of the people but you're from like one of the richest most famous yeah. people in the whole planet in the whole system Had here. a little bit of a different start in life oh yeah different start yeah. in life than everyone else so uh, so yeah there is a i think there is a little bit in this book about saying well maybe of course this is not what it's saying but you know the, the message of some people in this book are like saying oh maybe it shouldn't be left up to the people to decide who should go because otherwise they'll they'll vote in Donald Trump or maybe you know that maybe that's a bad thing but then on the other side you've got other people saying well you know democracy needs a direct even direct democracy kind of needs a helping hand sometimes so sometimes yeah. we've just got to invalidate some votes or shift some votes in here and here and the characters are like really is that what we have to do yeah that's what we have for, it's for the good it's for the greater good <laughs> we've got to undermine democracy and things so yeah, yeah that's that's a lot of what this that like it's fun 
I mean, it, it just to talk about, oh, yeah, it's about democracy and votes and, you know, the greater good sounds a bit boring. But it's also about robot battles and um, spaceships flying around and police procedural stuff, which uh, I quite enjoyed. Yeah. Yes, I, 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 you just read one of your only notes. I have one, uh, one only note. No, no, I wasn't only note. I just wanted um, to look up the name of that ship. Oh, OK. The Democratic well, Circus. Well, my note kind of fits in what we just talked about. And I think it's kind of um, that that struck with me because it was so... Uh, it is so close to real life. Yeah. Um, and there's this one thing where that uh, guy then talks to Dreyfus about uh, Panoply and so. Yeah. Um, so he says Panoply isn't serving us anymore. It's been failing us for years. Perhaps we'd all be better off without you at all. And this, it's been failing us. Yeah. It's like this. This is kind of like the sentence of the past year or so yeah. in my. In, in, my, in your Twitter feed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and not only in, in the United States, in, in all yeah. Western countries. Yeah, that's in, the thing as well. It just feels like, oh, Germany is fucking like, direct. You just go, oh, yeah, Brexit. Fucking, it just needed 50% of the people who bother. Of course, that wouldn't have happened. The Brexit wouldn't have happened in this way because it's not just, it's not 50% of the people who bothered voting have to pass yeah. it. It has to be 50% of all. And no, everyone has to vote, you know. So yeah. everyone is voting on everything. Um, but also like in, in Germany now, we, because yeah. people are thinking this, oh, so the pol politicians are failing us. We, we, the people don't have a say anymore. This is very much like a, a totally, uh, how do you say, if people get uh, tired yeah, yeah, of Yeah, disillusioned. Democracy. Disillusioned. Yeah. With so and they say, oh, it's not working anymore. So we get a, 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 a we, wo we vote like um, out of uh, protest and get yeah. a, a party in that re really Get. Yeah, and then you get a hung parliament oh. and no, and not not actually. Have, Germany hasn't even had a functioning not, parliament not for yeah. like five months now or something, hasn't it? So yeah, it's not as bad as um, Belgium, which went years and years and yeah. years without a functioning it's parliament. It's not that bad, but but still, it's it's kind of like it's very close to society currently. Yeah, uh, in this res respect, that it, it looks at democracy. Yeah, uh, but and this is explores it. But it is an it is a fun idea when you go right. There's ten thousand habitats, and you know all of these can be run. It's that's yeah. actually explored a lot more in the first book where they have oh, yes. they they go into these different societies and there's like voluntary <laughs> yeah. voluntary fascist states and you know and other people that go in and they're just put into boxes and they just don't yeah, but they, do anything yeah. but they, they, they're they allowed to leave and they're allowed to do anything yeah. and everyone's like is that a really good idea it's like people going oh yeah well it's it's damaging to them personally but they they know the, what their, they want their only right is that they can leave and go to a different yeah. different habitat if they want to yeah. but also in this in, in this glitter band every person has to vote and I yes. think maybe that is the the, the ma yeah, that's major what I was difference to our yeah that's what I was saying before like Brexit system. wouldn't happen here yes because Brexit didn't happen because fifty three people or fifty three percent of the entire country voted for Brexit Brexit yeah. happened because fifty three percent of the people who turned up to vote to bre for breakfast voted for it yeah. and it, that turns out to be like you know after all the people who didn't vote and then people who can't vote and too young to vote and yeah, all yeah. and didn't it's sort of like thirty percent thirty percent of yeah. the people maybe even less than that yeah so um, that's quite. Quite an interesting way of looking at it. Yeah, so um, Dreyfus has, there's this stuff that, you know, there's that stuff going on and Dreyfus is like, okay, who's this Devon Garland? Devon Garland, that's it. Uh, yeah. Who's this guy? And people go, oh yeah, it's Julius, his name's Julius Voy. Um, and then we get, interspersed with this, we actually get flashbacks of Julius Voy and his kind of like lesser known brother, uh, is it Conrad? Yeah, Conrad. No. No. Caleb. Caleb, that's it. Conrad <laughs> must be someone else. I don't remember who Conrad is. Nobody. But Caleb, eh, I'm sure there's a Conrad. There's no Conrad. Okay, so Caleb there. And so we we get this we get this sort of like flashback there and my immediate my immediate thing with Juliana is like, "All right, there's actually two of them." who is he and, and this was before we either finished the book but Juliana was like halfway through the book and I was 20% 20, 20 of the way through the book and I was like oh is it so is this guy when he's older is that Julius or is he Caleb and you're like, uh, like this. <laughs> and so that's one of those kind of things that you, it, it twists backwards and forwards it's sort of playing with your identity like playing with the identity who these kids were um, uh, when they were young you find out about them but it's like who is this guy who's taken on this this uh, one of their one of their names. He's he's got one of their names, but does he know? Yeah. Um, and then we have actually like two problems in the, in the book yes. this time. Yeah. There are like two problems. We have two parties we follow along. Yeah. We have Dreyfus going on. Yeah. On his journey, and we have Talia Eng and Spava. 
Yeah, Spava, the, the hyper pig, the, which is a great invention of so a, a pig, which is, um, well, no, it's a human. No, it's a pig, which has been infused with enough human DNA that if you need spare organs, you can take one of these things. But they're obviously, of course, enough hu- human DNA to make them into intelligent, sentient beings. Yes. And they're used as like slave labor for a while and things. But here is a hyper pig, which has become a... Uh, uh, a police, uh, a policeman, let's say, well, a prefect. He became a prefect as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, but there's still a lot of prejudice against him. And Talia Eng, who was, uh, uh, yeah, just she's getting on with her job as well. And they're investigating lots of strange deaths. There's been about sixty deaths at this point. And they're like, we're trying to get to the, we're trying to get to the bottom of this. And Talia Eng is brought in at the start of the book. We get that backstory. So yeah, p- lots of people dying. They're not quite sure how many people are going to die or why is it happening or what's it going on. Plus. This rabble rouser and his backstory that uh, that um, that the prefect uh, Dreyfus is is getting to the bottom of are they going to be connected? Well, yes, of course, because that's how these books work. Of course, it all becomes connected and things. Uh, and because but it's, it's Alice, very clever, yes, yeah. uh, because it's Alistair Reynolds, you know that it's everything that's mentioned is going to come back. All of these different things are going to come back. It's a little bit less in this actually because there are some of the side characters like. Um, like the uh, like the clockmaker and um, Aurora and stuff, which are left over from the first book, which have a little bit of impact on this book, but not not as much as you would expect. Actually, not as much as I was expecting going in. They are a little bit more innocent, and I do like the the end of that where like Aurora and the clockmaker are like, oh. All ah, right, we're saving that. It's, it, it almost felt like a little scene at the end of this book, which is going, yes, more on these two later on. <laughs> more on these two in a later book, you know, with uh, yeah. the clock making Aurora. So, yeah, um, I don't want to get too much into it, but did you enjoy the story overall? Oh, I had so much fun. Yeah? I had so much fun because, you know, I uh, this comes back to my enjoyment of science fiction and uh, crime stories and this is like again like like detective crime yeah sort of, detective yeah. crime stories and it's like the perfect combination of yeah. this again and uh, I just like the way that he's exploring the characters and the worlds we get to know so many different things and um, it's just fun to read and um, yeah. yeah 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 you got any feedback about any parts of the story and spoiler free but like any disappointments or anything or did you mostly get one disappointment get... what's that the end. Really? I read and read and read and read and suddenly that was it. Yeah. And I, thought, like, I felt it a little bit disappointing at the end as well because what these boys were and who they were and stuff, it was just like you got there and I was like, oh, it's going to be a big reveal. And yeah, just sort of like one like, person just goes, oh, this is what this is what our backstory is. And it just and I was like, oh, why didn't yeah. why couldn't the police detectives find that? I mean, they, they did their job. They, they were yeah. catching the bad guys. They were doing the thing. They'd got most of the way there. But then the actual final mystery, which I would ne- I didn't see coming. I mean, there I I knew something had to be connecting all of these people who died. I mean, that's what the that's what the whole story is like. What's connecting all these people? Why yeah. these people who died? They find one thing that connects them all, but then why did that one thing connect them all? And so there was that going on. But yeah, I was just and then it got to the end. And it was sort of like and they just said like the bad guy turns around and just says, "This is the thing that connects them all," and that's it. And then he explains that like twice over, just in case you didn't catch it the first time. But yeah, I did find I like I liked what the solution was. I liked what connected it all. I thought that was yeah, an yeah. interesting thing. But I think it would have been better if one of the characters had found, like one of the characters who's, who was trying to find that out, found that out themselves by, you know, somehow found that out, rather than it just being handed to them on a plate. And I did find that a little bit, like like you, a little bit too, um, yeah, just not... Satis- and, uh, it's not satisfying storytelling in the end. Yeah, and uh, it doesn't have a. I can't go forward. Anyway, my book had uh, four hundred and fourteen pages apparently. Yeah. And so I like you know you know this is like always my end. Yeah. That was always the thing. Oh. Now you've always got to think there's going to be a glossary. There's going to be thanking the uh, author. Oh. Yeah. So so I was always thinking like oh it's um ninety eight percent so I have still have stuff to read and then yeah. it was suddenly oh that's it what, a, wait about wait, the, what, about Golan's it? about Golan's publisher yeah. Uh, yeah, so well that happens a lot. I I now know bit... I know now uh, audiobooks are pretty good because they always end right at the very end. But ebooks and other books, I always think there's going to be acknowledgements. There's going to be there's going to be like the first chapter of another author's book. Really, is that the only way that you can get through this? No, I'm, I'm sure I can do it somehow. Oh yeah, yeah I can just yeah, just go down to the end. Yeah, Yulena is like swiping <laughs> swiping through page by page, 414 pages of PDF swiping to the left. 
Yeah, I know what you mean, though. Um, so anyway, I, yeah, that is, I that's do my think biggest disappointment. If this I book, I know it's weird to say this, but normally books, I do. Oh yeah, that was at the end of my one, just that about this. Yeah, book. so it actually has four and eight pages. So there's only five. There's only five pages at yeah, the but end. It's, uh... Yes, but no, I actually the stuff at that point, I actually like that little like uh, that mm. little like prologue. Well, not the prologue. That's at the start. But the epilogue, where mm. you know it's uh, yeah. oh, and now it's five weeks later or something, and this person's feeling better, and yes. this person is coming around, and they're going to do with this with this character. I actually didn't mind that part. It was the bit before. It was like the big resolution. Yes. And I did notice that this book is actually a lot. Sh- it felt a lot shorter and a lot faster paced than other Alistair Reynolds. Oh yeah, uh, books. or than the prefect as well. Yeah, the prefect yeah, yeah, is this yeah, yeah. big chunky book. You know, the Revelation Space series is a big chunky book. His other ones are a big chunky book. And the reason for this is actually because I read his his blog. I read Alistair Reynolds' blog. He said he read he wrote Slow Bullets, which is a you know like a novella length kind of story. Yeah, and he wrote um, Revenger. And which was more of a young adult kind of stuff, which I still haven't got. Haven't read, read, I haven't read yeah. that one. Um, I'm sure I'll get around to it at some point. I didn't hear that many good things, but he actually said I felt it very. Refer- oh, and he's, he wrote some other books as well, sort of like I think a Doctor Who book or some, you know, whatever, ah, okay. whatever, like work That's for funny. hire. And, and he's sort of like it actually felt really good fun, just barreling through a story and getting to the end quickly and not doing this. And that's why I think the world building in this is a lot thinner and some not so much the characters, but the story this story could have been spread out like at the end they go yeah. oh and there's this big thing there's a bomb gonna go off and we're gonna go and try and save it or something like that now at most like often in a book that's be like another two chapters of them doing that yes. and in this they're just like and they just skip forward and they're like oh well they, they, yeah, saved, yeah. they saved that and got some evidence or whatever and I was like oh that's actually refreshing because that was what we just had there was the end of the story and that last bit was just would have just been ramping up some tension it's like sometimes at the end of a movie you think oh that's all resolved and then sort of like oh and and actually now just a fight scene for no reason and it would yeah. have been like that or oh the the whole story is open the bad guy has died oh but now there's a bomb to defuse a little bit of extra tension for no yeah. reason and it did feel like Alistair Reynolds wasn't playing to his I'm writing a massive tome of a novel with lots of world building and, and just many much more action it was much more compact I think yes and it was very concentrated on those two stories yes and the the world building totally happens in the prefect in yes. the previous book yes which is why I think it's totally uh, vital to to yeah. read or listen to uh, the, the, the the prefect yeah I would actually uh, suggest to uh, to listen to the audiobook it's just just great oh right okay well i mean i don't i don't i don't have the audiobooks here as well but uh what's this it says the prefect um for well that's actually weird because it says hardcover what 410 page? pages oh, well. and elysium fire um oh that's kindle edition 488 pages yes. yeah if i if we found the other one so yeah it it's, might be different uh, let's have a look all editions let's try and find the hardcover of elysium fire uh, 488 oh that's weird so now it's saying that the hardcover of of, um, of elysium fire yes. is longer than the prefect and that i can't believe that's true no. that just that feels that feels just wrong. Mm. Okay, let's have a look at Audible. Um, Audible, and I'm going to look up, see if I can find it here. Let's go um, the... No, oh, no, no, that didn't work. Here we go. You talk for a bit about something while uh, I look this up. Well, we, we could put in the little uh, uh, advertisement right now. For what? Because we are looking on Audible for an audiobook, and I would actually say, if you want an, uh, a, a, f- a cool, free audiobook, yeah. Get the prefect. It's totally worth it. Oh yeah, that's t- that is true actually. Okay, Revelation Space, the prefect. Oh no, they don't they don't Audible on uh, the German Audible doesn't have No, it has a uh, the prefect. Yeah, it has the prefect, but it doesn't have Elysium Fire. That's my point. Oh, so, no, I don't think it is out yet as an audiobook. Oh, actually, now that I look at this, it says here, look, Revelation Space 22 hours, Redemption uh, Absolution Gap 27 hours and the prefect is actually 19 hours. So that was already a, a bit of a shorter book. But yeah, it's a it's a tri- I'm just saying it felt shorter. It didn't feel as as jam packed of work with world building as it did. No, it now, did have a totally different focus, but I I I still liked it and um yep, the- I like the people like I like the characters in it. Yeah. Uh, like Jane Aumonier. She's yeah. just all like. I also- think she, uh, Jane, Lady Jane, in the first book was this tragic figure. In this yes. book, was like a hard ass police sergeant who's running everything. And politician. And politician. I think she's going to become the the main antagonist in the next book called Book Four. Antagonist. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. She's she is struggling. She is struggling, and she is dangerous, and she doesn't have that position. Okay. I mean, she's held on to that position because of politics, not because of ability. Yeah. And I see, I see the prefect, like I see Dreyfus 
butting heads with her more because in this book she she wasn't always on top of it and she had yeah, but, a very cruel streak yeah but i actually quite liked this because it showed that a politician and a police captain whatever always has to look like they can't always like the decisions they're making is super hard and and they always have to kind of find a balance and and sometimes uh, they just don't yeah, and i, think I just that don't think just makes them uh, i just don't think she has it in her to, to get through this like I'm saying, when I'm saying a main antagonist, it's not that she's going to turn evil. What I'm meaning is that she is going to be the main thing standing in the way of dealing with a problem in the future. Maybe, but so far she always like if Dreyfus had a a thing, yes. like a strong opinion about something, she, she always, always considered it. She does always consider it. That's what I'm saying. In the future, I see her being the main thing that stops Dreyfus oh, actually okay. solving. Like the the series, as it's called here. On uh, uh, Dreyfus emergency. Yes, number they, they, one. they they the prefect Dreyfus emergency number two. This is so. This is named after prefect Dreyfus. Um, so Tom Dreyfus is his, his full name, isn't it? Yes. Um, so yeah, uh, he uh, a fast paced science fiction crime story combining futuristic setting with a gripping tale of technology revolution and revenge. Um, Ooh. Yes, that, that's part of that's the part of the blurb there. Yeah. Uh, but yes, the prefect. I think, like you say, because he is the main character, and he is the one who is the driving force of this series and of these stories. Um, and actually, I know it's weird to say this, but I really like the scenes where they go to the uh, the. It's like like a monastery um, with is it Sister Catherine or whatever hospice. her name is? Yeah, the hospice where they go and and they yeah. they they drop off broken people. That's that's also mentioned in Chasm City. That's why uh, if you if you read Chasm City and then you read the prefect, you're like, oh, I know this place. This uh, is where they okay. people come through there as well. So that's interesting. Uh, yep, it's a good one. Yeah. Um. So anyway, I just I really like it. But what I'm saying is that like in the future, I see this. The, Dreyfus having big challenges and one of the main challenges is Lady Jane. Jane. Okay. Um, well, there's certainly going to be more books about this. Yes. Now it, that we know that this is a that this is actually a series. Yeah. Well, because after I read the the, the prefect, this was kind of like a, a set like a book. Like, yeah. Well, it didn't, yeah. Fe- it didn't feel like a series. It. Well, or it like, felt like a prequel. In other words, like yeah. we know what's going to happen in the distant future, but there's yes. always room to play with here. Yeah. And like I say, they've got 10,000 habitats to play with, yeah. massive city down in Chasm City and Yellowstone down there. Um, also, they've got a long way to go with this technology and who controls this technology and what's happening oh, yes. behind the scenes with this voting technology. Yeah. And and also you've got there's got a long way to go with the action because like you say every single different habitat you, they, there's always and this is what happened in the previous book hey there's a habitat we go inside what are we going to find yeah. I don't know it's, it's always really yeah. funny you know, they go somewhere and then they say oh this is a habitat where uh, people are just do, doing stuff on a playground I yeah don't know. It's and like, this uh, yeah and this, this is one where we go in there and it's going to be completely there was actually quite a few oh this is an abandoned empty habitat yeah. and they go in and sort of like oh no a booby trap oh no this building yeah. oh no what's going on there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, lots of good stuff, and also other weapons that they can have. Like in this one, only at the very end did the big guns come out. But oh, before then, it was sort of like, oh, I've got this whip hound, and you have this whip hound. By the way, when we oh, top, when, when so we good. listed our top, when we did a whole episode of top fives, our top five favorite spaceships, our top five favorite aliens, or top five science fiction things, and the top five weapons. Um, I think one of them definitely was the, the whip, whip hound. hound yeah. The whip hound was one of our favorite science fiction weapons. It reminds me a little bit of you know in um, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, the guy with the with the whistle with the yes. with the thing. Yes. He whistles and then it goes around. Right that thing roll, feels roll. very much to me. That like, feels very whip houndy, sort of like something yeah. which has its own intelligence and own direction, and you can just throw it out there, and it kind of does what it wants, and then it comes back to you. Yeah. And you, but the whip hound is way more like capable than that and oh, yeah. autonomous than that yeah. in a way. It's pretty um, cool. I can't remember the other. I can't remember the other top fives that you have. I know that one of them, one of my favourites, was the uh, the gun in um, Ian M. Banks' uh, "Against the Dark Background." The gun that they're trying to find the uh, is something that when you point it at something and pull the trigger, it destroys what it's going to destroy. But you never know how it's going to destroy. So if you point it at a person, yeah. and you point the trigger, they just they have a coughing fit and die. And if you point it at a city, like you know, it, sure it could just blow up, but also like a volcano could just come up and just or it could be wiped uh-huh. out by a meteor. So it's like it, it kind of plays with the like the quantum structure of the universe and the uh, and the different um that reminds like, me a little bit of the um uh, what's it called the surprise no the 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 in in 
trip across the galaxy. No, what's the name? Yeah, uh, yeah, Hitchhiker's Guide to yes, the Galaxy. Yeah, where they have yeah, it's the drive, probability the drive. Probability drive. Yes. It's, it's like the probability gun. It's sort yeah. of like what's the least probable thing that can happen that, is to destroy this yeah. way, and how what's the least probable way it can happen. Yeah, so it is very much a probability drive kind of thing. Um, anyway, that, we're getting off topic there. So yes. this book. Very good book. I really enjoyed it. The character was good. The story overall was good. The backstory was good. How the backstory was revealed, a little bit unsatisfying. And yes. it and felt... There was, there's some questions that I still have, but maybe they're going to be uh, answered in, in the next... All right. What question do you have? I don't know if it's a spoiler or not. Oh, okay. Um... Okay, let's not do it. But you just have some questions. We'll talk. We'll talk about that yeah, after, and, and after we finish that recording. Wasn't, that wasn't satisfingly. Like, is it like uh, who was do, who was doing that at that point? Kind of question. No, it was more like, um, did they actually manipulate? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Like, what have they been manipulating? Yeah, yeah. yeah I understand That's that kind of thing. Who who does have that power and has that power being used? I mean, to we manipulate? know that they have this power. Have they actually been using it? Because yes. that was never answered. Well, I think yes, but again, it's sort of behind the scenes. What we're talking about is that the people who set up this voting system, they left in some back doors. This is explained right near the start of the story. Um, but uh, yeah, it's always sort of like, oh yes, and in the case of a massive emergency, like if if they're going to vote in the Nazi party or for, vote for Brexit, someone behind can just, we can just tip the scales a little bit yeah. in the favour of the right decision. Oh, yeah, but it's very, it's but very... But then they decide what the yeah, right yeah, decision yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. Like, the, yeah. just this rich, massively rich, long-lived family, the most influential family, they're the ones with the controls. It's like, well, that's no good. Yeah. Um, so, yes, like I say, a book about democracy wrapped up in an action adventure, um, crime, crime solving, solving uh, police procedural science fiction um, thing. Like I say, I would have liked a more satisfying revelation of the backstory and a bit more world building, which isn't just like, as you know, but I really did like the dome, you know, the, the dome yeah. that the kids lived under. There was, was a lot of fun yeah. stuff. But it just didn't feel as it didn't feel as bright and as lived in as either the Chasm City, which is post melding plague, or the Prefect, which is the previous book to this, yeah. which kind of was setting up what the what the glitter band was before it became the the Rust Belt. Um, anyway, I think that's enough. Yeah. I think we've uh, recorded uh, a enough. Fun, fun, re- fun read. Do you have a rating of for this book? I rated it. Four stars. I also rated it four stars. So this we're just going to leave as a four, four star, star book. book. Uh, I, I think the prefect was one was your one of your first five star yeah, book totally. when you when you first joined in. So enjoyed uh, it so much. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, it's 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 a really good series. Alistair Reynolds remains one of my favorite authors, even if he's had a few not so great books over over the last ten it years happens. or so. It happens. Yeah. All right then. Um, is that it? Uh, yeah. Okay, well. you can uh, follow me on Twitter. I'm at Luke Burridge over there. Juliana, you can follow her on Twitter. She is J J U K U Berlin, as in Juliana Kunzendorf Berlin. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram and on YouTube at Luke Burridge. I'm Luke Burridge in all of those different places. Also, become my friends on Goodreads, and I can see what you and other people think about these books. For example, friends reviews, 29 friend reviews, actually... All of them except two are just, we want to read yes, this book. But Terence Blake rated this book four stars. Um, actually, he says three and a half stars in there. Uh, before reading Elise and Fire, uh, I first read the story Open and Shut. Oh, there's actually... Uh, and then the novel The Prefect. Oh, yeah, there's Open and Shut is a short story before The Prefect, I think. Oh, so, uh, yeah, you, got, you really got to have read The Prefect before this one. Um, Elysium Fire is built as a standalone novel but our understanding and that enjoyment is greatly enriched by reading these two prequels which I definitely I definitely uh, think but yes uh, so far this book has got a 4.32 rating but of yeah. course it's the it second book in a series 159 rating yes yet so yes. not massive no it isn't and of course it's uh, lots of people who are already fans of Alistair Reynolds are getting yeah. his book as soon as it comes out so yeah lots of five and yeah. four stars I was, oh, it looks I was like four stars I was wondering about myself am I a little bit biased where it, because I just like Alistair Reynolds' style. It, this is a science fiction book review podcast is a completely subjective podcast about the things that I like and if you're with me about what you like and the rating is 100% subjective. It's like, how much did I enjoy reading and talking and thinking about this book? 
mostly yeah. how much did I enjoy reading it, but sometimes it goes up a bit. You know, like that's what happens to you. Like you read a book and it's really frustrating, and you're like two stars, and then you talk through about someone, and you're like, like oh, mm. okay, three stars. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's it. So don't think, am I biased for this author? Yes, if they're one of your favorite authors and one of your favorite characters and one of your favorite settings, yeah. yes, of course you're biased about it. Don't even worry about it. So yeah, become our friends on, on Goodreads, and uh, if you want us to read a book or review a book, the next book that I'm going to be reviewing, uh, actually, um, maybe not because I'm doing uh, I'm reading Altered Carbon um, me too uh, because there's a, a podcast that the SFF Audio is recording next week and uh, so I might be joining that and also the reason they're doing it is because it's just come out as a Netflix series so check out Altered Carbon by Richard K. Morgan, Morgan. actually in, in the UK he's just Richard Morgan but in America he's Richard K. Morgan ah, okay. um, I think maybe there was another Richard Morgan in America. I'm not sure oh, how okay. it works out. I see. So, uh, so that's the next book. So read along with that. And after we finish that, we will um, probably... What I'm thinking of doing is, is reading the book, doing the SFF audio podcast about just the book. Yeah. And then finishing off the first season of the Netflix series. Uh, and then we'll do our podcast recording. So it's not just about us talking about the, uh, sure. just the book yeah, again. We'll see how it goes. All right. That's it from us. Um, is there anything else you want to say? No. No. That's it. Okay. Thanks a lot for listening. And I'll catch you next time. Goodbye.